Hi folks, Vince here again with the Tinkerer's Workshop. We've got a little machining project today. Um, this is an end mill holder for my Atlas Horizontal Milling Machine. And this is a genuine Atlas end mill holder. Uh, it was sold, offered in their catalogs, Atlas catalogs. Uh, it's got a number two Morse taper to fit in the spindle of the Atlas Milling Machine. And then there's a uh, threaded hole for the drawbar. I believe it's 3 8 by 16 threads. And then on the business end, there's a, a half-inch diameter bore to accept half-inch diameter end mills. And they simply, uh, you simply insert the end mill into the holder like this. There's a set screw that you tighten down on this flat on the end mill. So put that in, tighten down the set screw to lock it in place. And then you chuck this up in the milling machine and you're good to go. Now, Atlas only offered one size of end mill holder, the half-inch size. So if you wanted to use end mills of smaller diameters, you had to purchase uh, this set of bushings, end mill bushings. There are four in the set. And basically they're just sleeves uh, with different inner diameters. And the idea is that you'd take one with the inner diameter that matches your end mill. And in this case, this is a quarter inch end mill, but it has a 3 8 inch shank. So let's see, I would need this one here and you just slide that over the end mill. There's a little window cut into the sleeve. You line that up with the flat on the end mill and then insert it into the end mill holder like that. And you can tighten down your set screw and you're good to go again. Now this system works. Um, the one thing I don't really care about, care for about it is that when you go to take the end mills out, sometimes that sleeve will get caught inside the end mill holder and then you have to you know figure out how to get it out dig it out or kind of shake it to, to get it out and it's just a little bit of a hassle so what I was thinking is that uh, if I had some different size end mill holders I wouldn't have to worry with those about those bushings and sleeves and I could just chuck the end mills up directly so almost all of the end mills I have um, have a 3 8 inch diameter shank even like this one's a quarter inch cutting diameter but the shank is three eighths of an inch so if i just had one more end mill holder with a three eighths inch diameter bore that would handle probably 95 percent of the end mills that i have and uh, between that and the half inch i'd cover almost everything i need to do and then if i did have something smaller i could use those bushings like i just showed you so I've got this piece of stress proof steel left over from another project and I've already uh, cut it to length and faced off the ends and uh, center drilled the ends to mount it up between centers in the lathe. And the way I think I'm going to approach this is to cut the taper first, the Morse 2 taper, and then drill and tap the hole on the end for the draw bar. Then I'll take it out from between centers, flip it around, and chuck it up into the spindle of my lathe, which is also fitted with the Morse 2 taper sleeve. And that way, as it's running in the lathe, I can uh, drill and ream out the hole here, a 3 8 inch hole, for the end mills. And hopefully that will keep the uh, bore here concentric with the taper. So let's head over to the lathe and get started. I'm over at my South Bend lathe and I've got the blank mounted between centers. It's being driven by a lathe dog and a drive plate. And I'm going to come in now with a cutoff tool and establish the shoulder where the tapered section of the holder begins. All right, to cut this Morse 2 taper, I'm going to use a taper attachment. Uh, my lathe came with a taper attachment, so it's a good opportunity to use it. And the way these taper attachments work, uh, to start with, you have to remove the screw that holds the nut for the cross slide. And that allows the cross slide now to just float freely in here. 
And then on the taper attachment itself, uh, there's a bar that runs parallel with the lathe bed and it's mounted on a couple of bolts that if you loosen these you can pivot this bar to match the degree of taper that you want to cut. So I've set this up to the taper, the Morse 2 taper, tighten these down and now all I have to do is tighten this down and as you move your carriage the taper attachment kind of drags the cross slide along with it and follows this angle of taper. So the tricky part is getting this angle set just right. And to do that I used a little tip that I saw in one of Mr. Pete uh, Tubal Kane's videos. I've got a Morse 2 taper reamer, brand new reamer mounted up between centers here. And I'm going to use the taper on this reamer as a, as a gauge just to set this angle. So I've already got it all set up and I'll show you when I run it across the surface of that taper. I don't really get any run out. It's less than half a thousandth of run out so hopefully that'll be close enough. Got the workpiece mounted back in the lathe and I put a little layout die on here just to make it easier to see what's going on. Just a couple of things to go over before I turn the lathe on. Uh, make sure that your tool bit is set at dead center with the workpiece. And you'll remember that we removed this screw from the cross slide, so the, there's, the cross slide is inoperable at this point. Any feeding you do of the tool bit has to be done with the compound rest. So you want to make sure that this compound rest is set at zero so that it's going straight into the workpiece. So fingers crossed, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the lathe and hope that it works. All right, I'm getting down close to final diameter, so I've taken it out of the lathe here just to check the angle. I've got a Morse 2 taper sleeve here, and I'll just slip that over, and it's a nice snug fit, uh, close fit. Doesn't seem to be any wobble or wiggle in there, so I think that's the angle's good. I'm not real crazy about the finish I'm getting, so I'm going to switch out to more of a finishing tool, and I'll take a couple of cleanup passes, and hopefully that'll be good for the taper.
Now I overshot the diameter and the sleeve is a loose fit on here, so uh, that's not good. I ended up making a second one, starting all over, and this one turned out right. Um, it's a good, good fit there. Actually, this if you push this on too hard, you can't get it out unless you knock it out with a drift pin. So that's good. Um, the original end mill holder has a, a shoulder on the end. I'm not sure what purpose that serves, but I went ahead and did the same on mine. And so my next step here, I'm going to reverse this in the lathe and chuck it up uh, in the spindle and just take a real light cleanup pass on this section so that I know that this is concentric with the taper. And then once that's done, I'll reverse it again and I'll hold this in a chuck and uh, that way I can drill and tap the end for the drawbar. I've mounted the blank in my four jaw chuck and I indicated it so it's running within half a thousandth of true and I've got it set up. I'm going to drill the hole for the uh, drawbar. I drilled this hole in two stages starting with a 3 16th inch drill bit and then I stepped up to a 5 16th inch drill bit which is the recommended hole size for a 3 8 inch tap. The hole's pretty deep, it's a couple inches deep, and I didn't have quite that much travel on the quill of my tailstock, so I ended up having to reposition the tailstock halfway through just to complete the hole. I used a tapered tap to initially cut the threads, and then because this is a blind hole, I switched over to a plug tap just so that I could thread all the way to the bottom of the hole. Now that I've got this hole drilled and tapped for the drawbar, I'm going to turn the end mill holder around and insert it into the spindle of my lathe. To prevent that end mill holder from working its way loose from the taper in the spindle, I've got a piece of all thread here with a couple of fender washers and a pair of hex nuts. I'm just going to pass that through the spindle and thread it into the end of that holder and then tighten it down. And that should hold it in place while I drill and ream the hole at the other end. Just like before, I drilled this hole in two stages as well, uh, stopping with a 23 64 inch drill bit, which leaves me just about a 64th of material to uh, clean up with the reamer. I drilled and tapped a hole for the set screw. I've got an end mill here, 3 8 inch diameter, and it just slides right in there. It's a real good fit, 
real close, no wiggle or slop in there. So let's take it over to the Atlas milling machine and we'll test it out. I've got the end mill holder mounted in my Atlas milling machine and just out of curiosity I wanted to see what the runout is on this so I've inserted a ground uh, 3 8 inch dowel pin into the end mill holder and I've set up my dial test indicator and you can see when I rotate this spindle by hand uh, I get about oh, one to one and a half thousandths of run out. So I, I don't know if that's good or bad, but it is what it is. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, mount up a cutter in here and see how it cuts.